Okay, I just want to do a uh, short video here discussing the risk factors for aspiration uh, in anesthesia. Now this is important because uh, risk factors for aspiration uh, form a very important part of the preoperative anesthetic assessment uh, because uh, it's a large part of the decision uh, when giving general anesthesia as to whether or not you need to secure a patient's airway, i.e. put in an endotracheal tube. Uh, so, when thinking about risk factors for aspiration, you can kind of group them into six categories, and we can go over all six of the categories here. So, the first category is decreased level of consciousness. Now, this is very important, um, and so th this is situations like drug overdose, head injury, um, any sort of kind of trauma situation, um, or if, if you're concerned about any kind of central nervous system pathology that you don't know much about, um, because these, play, these patients have uh, a lack of control or a, a lack of their intrinsic ability to protect their own airway. Likewise, in patients that have impaired airway reflexes, so these are patients who have had you know, recent CVAs or, or strokes in the past, um, or who, you know, maybe have had some local anesthesia to the airway. Um, maybe they have a neck mass or something. Uh, so they've had some local in there uh, because they've also lost their own intrinsic ability to control their, to protect their own airway. And, and then, of course, you know, there can be abnormal airway anatomy, um, it could be genetic or it could be the cause of the surgery itself. So like they, so they have a, a surgical mass uh, that's being excised, uh, that patient may be unable to protect their own airway. Um, or, or they can be kind of genetic like a Zanker's diverticulum. or uh, an esophageal stricture. And obviously the anatomy there is uh, making you nervous as to whether you're going to be able to, to, to secure that airway in, in a more emergency setting. Once the patient's been properly prepped and, and positioned for the surgery, will you be able to, to adequately put in a tube uh, or why is it just better off to put in a tube when you have a controlled environment before the surgery starts? Um, the last three categories kind of have to do with gastroesophageal factors. So you can have a decreased uh, GE, so gastroesophageal sphincter tone. Um, you know, perhaps the patient is elderly or pregnant. Pregnancy does funny things to the GI system. Uh, so they're actually more prone to things like reflux. Um, they might have a hiatus hernia, which, as we know, influences gastroesophageal sphincter tone. Uh, obese patients, um, uh, or even if they have an NG tube in for something else, although that actually decreases the, the act of having a, an NG tube into suction uh, should help us uh, with our, our uh, risk for aspiration, uh, but it does decrease the gastroesophageal sphincter tone. Um, <clears throat> you can have uh, reasons for delayed gastric emptying. Um, uh, so they can be taking things like narcotics uh, or anticholinergics, so there's definitely different medications that can cause delayed gastric emptying, you know, if they're just really anxious uh, because, you know, fear, um, any kind of pain uh, can cause delayed gastric emptying, uh, you know, as it's kind of a, a sympathetic or a parasympathetic response. Um, again, if a patient's pregnant, um, if they have diabetes, or if they're in renal failure, that as well can cause delayed gastric emptying. And our last category is, uh, is actually uh, any reason for increased intragastric pressure. 
And so as you can imagine, this is anything that kind of increases pressure on the abdomen. Um, <coughs> so we're talking pregnancy again. So as you can see, pregnancy is a major risk factor. Obesity again. That's definitely a big risk factor for aspiration. Um, things like bowel obstructions definitely cause uh, or are, are a risk factor and, and can cause aspiration them, themselves um, uh, if they have a reason for ascites, so if they have liver failure or, uh, or, or a, a malignancy or even a large intra-abdominal tumor can cause pressure, uh, potentially an abdominal aortic aneurysm. Um, so, uh, and, or, and this can even be considered uh, patient positioning. So if it's a surgery that's going to require significant trendelenburg or head down, uh, then that definitely is a risk for aspiration. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, so these are the major categories of risk factors for aspiration. Uh, we can do another series of videos on, uh, on how to actually optimize patient for surgery and how to prevent aspiration. Uh, but for now, thanks for watching.